Hey everybody, uh, it's been a little while since I did one of these in my car. Uh, so today's kind of a different topic and I will link a lot of stuff below in the description of the video to kind of catch you up and give you some more material to dig into if this is an interesting topic to you at all. Uh, but this is very much inspired by the Earthbound Rangers Kickstarter that's currently going on. And I was a backer of that originally uh, when they first launched it on the strength of the gameplay videos that I saw that Team Covenant uh, did. And also, I know the Sadler brothers are involved, and it's kind of like their style of game. If you've not heard of Earthbound Rangers, it is kind of like a living card game cooperative where you've got different decks that you kind of build uh, to sum up like little quest decks you're going to kind of run through. And there's a map and like a kind of a legacy style campaign. It's set in like a really far, far Earth future. And you're sort of uh, traveling through this countryside, sort of trying to uh, bring the nature sort of into into check and that kind of thing. That's a really terrible explanation, but it's basically it's kind of an LCG style game with a big kind of map camp campaign. And a lot of the sort of ex FFG folks uh, have moved over to this company and started it. And the other part of it that got me intrigued beyond all of that was they're trying to uh, manufacture it in a sustainable way with sustainable materials and stuff like that. So if you watched my channel at all, you know I did a kind of a live YouTube podcast broadcast uh, a couple of months ago with a guy named Derek Pennington and Marty Cannell from Rolling Dice and Taking Names joined us. And he is a kind of sustainability expert. And so I'll have a link to that below. I'll have a link to the Earthbound Rangers uh, Kickstarter. And I will also, though, have a link to an update that they recently did on the Earthbound Rangers Kickstarter project page, uh, which I was not aware of this particular piece of the sustainability puzzle that they were looking at. I was only looking at kind of like the materials and that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing that they've done is they have hit now a stretch goal, which kind of unlocked some other goals in the project, to have regional manufacturing. So once they get a certain number of backers within a given region, they'll be able to do the manufacturing in that region. And that's cool for a couple of reasons, right? Because there will be theoretically some jobs created in a different region uh, where you might be, you know, purchasing and getting that game shipped to you. So it's kind of local folks to you getting a job. And it's also gonna cut down on shipping, which is a big part of sustainability, right? Um, I also have another link there. Uh, Derek just actually today posted a, uh, a thread on BoardGameGeek in the general forums. And he kind of basically sort of summarizes a little bit of what we all covered in that initial YouTube podcast broadcast uh, very succinctly. So it's a big kind of complex topic with sustainability. It's not just the materials used, it's kind of the shipping, the manufacturing processes, and there's a lot of you know stuff involved here. But what really kind of triggered me and caught me was this update that came out the other day from the Earthbound Rangers where, hey, if we get enough people to back in a certain region, we can go ahead and manufacture that game in that region with local manufacturing uh, stuff. So I thought, well, that's that's cool. Why have I never seen this before? And because, you know, it hasn't been a priority for anybody probably. So, and this, these are these guys' first Kickstarter. And so I think they're trying to start off on the right foot here uh, with their sort of process and their sort of ethos and paradigm as a company. And it got me to thinking because of all of this shipping issues that are happening right now, um, if you're not aware of it, it's pretty rampant where shipping costs for publishers have just gone absolutely uh, bananas. I will sort of paraphrase and probably be a little bit loose with the figures, but one publisher, I don't remember who it was, was telling me that they had, not telling me, they I saw it, um, they had like back in March or some other date of this year in 2021, they had a quote for one of their Kickstarter projects and it was like 30 grand to ship all of the games. And then since there's like a bunch of lines and everything like that, and the shipping's just been hammered. And I've, we've seen this across not just the board game industry, but like every single industry. It's now gone up to like 200 grand or something to ship. So the cost to sh just to ship the game has gone up like hundreds of percents. <laughs> um, and so my game group and I, we have like a discord where we all still keep in touch. And we, we always will be talking about lots of different issues in that group. And one thing that a fellow in their group, let's call him Billy, he keeps bringing up the uh, topic of maybe this kind of shipping cost issue will force publishers to kind of look elsewhere outside of China 
to actually publish the game so they can cut way down on the shipping. Because now theoretically, some of the economists and stuff are saying the shipping costs should start to come back down. The gas prices will come back down. Housing prices will come back down, you know, theoretically. Um, but, you know, they don't always come back down as far as you want anyway. So that's a whole like, you know, well of an abyss of a topic. Um, but when I was, my attitude has always been like, well, nah, they're just, you know, they'll just eat it. And, you know, that you can't just like spin up factories overnight and, and that kind of thing. But the kind of the, I don't know the right word here, but the, the group attitude that is, uh, submitted by this recent Earthbound Rangers update, right? So they say, well, if enough of you in your area get together, so to speak, and back the game, then we've got enough money there to make the, you know, cost of productions and the scaling of everything to work out so we can actually do production in your region, which is cool. So it got me thinking like, well, what if a, more than one publisher did something like that, where they got together and said, you know what, if we got together and we linked up all our Kickstarters or all of our, you know, upcoming productions for the year 2022 and 2023. And, you know, we committed to producing a certain number of games in North America or Europe or, um, you know, Australia and that kind of places. Uh, couldn't we then start to shift away from being so reliant on, you know, Chinese production? And I thought, I thought to me, it's like, yeah, why is this not... It, there probably just hasn't been the impetus, and there's there's certainly uh, the general cost involved, but especially with the Kickstarters, and I'll also put a link to this interview with Andrew Navarro, the head of uh, uh, the company that's making Earthbound Rangers. Uh, he actually did an interview with Shut Up and Sit Down, and he talked about how using Kickstarter cuts out the kind of the middleman, so they can kind of save some of the costs there. So this is probably more of a Kickstarter thing. But I also kind of was starting to think like, what if a company like Asmodee or Hasbro or a conglomerate of companies got together and said, okay, well, let's open up a manufacturing plant, right? So that's that's difficult because it's a completely different game than, you know, publishing games and designing games and doing the production versus the actual physical manufacturing. There's two different worlds there. Um, but if a company like Asmodee or something around that area would be able to spring up some manufacturing plants in a different regions and that some of the other publishers could come in and kind of partner with or something like that, or like a Panda game manufacturing company, one of the bigger manufacturers, uh, Ludo, Ludo Fact, I think it's called over in Germany, they could open up even uh, factories in, in, the U, in the US or something and work with publishers and kind of work together to do uh to kind of solve this because i could see um that being a difficult proposition but also an opportunity for like an asmodee a luda factor a panda to say hey we're going to shift over here and then you know we can we can bring you guys along as a group of publishers or whatever and then start to manufacture regionally um so i thought that was kind of an interesting kind of thing where we can kind of cooperatively uh do something like that to help alleviate the shipping help kind of break the dependency on uh, kind of that one sort of bottleneck of China doing a, most of the manufacturing. Uh, so it, it's interesting kind of a group of concepts there. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I just wanted to end with this as I'm not like a, a big like anti anything kind of person. I'm usually like uh, to a fault probably optimistic. Um, and so I don't want to come off like anti Ch Chinese person. You know what I mean? So um, and I have, I have actually had some discussions with some folks that are Chinese nationals about this, uh, unrelated topics about it. And there is a sense there, I think, from the people that live there, let's take the government out of the picture, that there is too much of an anti-China sentiment. And I fully appreciate that. The company I work for in kind of my real life job, uh, we deal with international folks all the time. And I, so me personally, I'm all for the middle class happening across the earth, not just in my own country. Um, but I do, uh, worry sometimes a little bit about the policies of the Chinese government, stuff like that. But I, you know, I worry about the policies of my government too, <laughs> and lots of governments. Um, so that's all like above my pay grade. Uh, so, but the people is, I think, are, I think are good folks. And, uh, and I've been corrected a little bit on that in the last year or so, but, um, yeah. So I think it'd be interesting though, to see kind of a cooperative thing, you know, and keep the manufacturing in China, that's going to go to. All of the countries over in Asia because that makes sense right so you could kind of better distribute this manufacturing and make it regional and there's probably 
some company around there that could kind of do that and get that deployed out there and get folks working and and probably get some more manufacturing places up to be able to produce more games. There's kind of a dual topic there because especially if you go and watch the the YouTube podcast with Derek, I mean, some of these up until recently, some of these companies were probably making too many games that they probably don't need to be making in it because they might be making a lot of shovelware in some ways. Uh, but that's that's a hard balancing act there. So um, that should hopefully free up the pipeline, though, if we had more manufacturing places. Because I know, like, sometimes an Asmo Day or something will come in, speaking of Asmo Day, they'll come and say, hey, we want to publish all these, manufacture all these games through this person. And that may shove, like, other publishers to the back of the line, which isn't really fun <laughs> for those publishers at all. Um, so there's some interesting things here. So that's kind of, I'm a little bit leery about saying Asmodee should jump into this because then all of their games would probably be at the front of the line, right? Um, which wouldn't be really fair, you know. So anyway, just some thoughts I had there. And I'm really interested in to see how this Earthborn Rangers Kickstarter uh, goes up. I know I'm harping on them. I'm not like sponsored or nothing like them. I just backed it myself and I was interested in the game and I thought it was a cool sustainability thing. The game looks fun too. So I wouldn't have backed it if I didn't think the game looked good. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. All right. Thanks. Any comments, totally appreciate it. Thank you.